Okay, well, came back after a while. I thought I was going to come right back, and uh, and uh, I stopped my previews distracting me. <clears throat> okay, um, back we're going to try to do a little more on the AS Rock before bedtime here, 7.30 now. Uh, I had to go off and do some other things for a little while, a couple hours, <clears throat> and or an hour. I don't know what it was, but anyway. Um got it up and running again and uh I uh let me get I guess I'll go ahead and get on the desktop now. I um uh, that's the main when I do switches of course then I have to check again. I guess I should have I wanna be able to hear it to make sure the audio, everything works. <clears throat> uh, it's terrible when you know audio or video quits on you, so if you don't check both you won't know. So, so there we go. We're good. Now I can see that I really am showing the desktop on the live stream. Okay. Um, let's see. Right. I should have done that. That's something I want to check. I'm looking at my list here. I got to look into the her pa save passwords again, but I'm not going to do that on here. <clears throat> um, obviously so um, I checked through the ports everything I could think of I was kind of confused really but I muddled through a bunch of the ports uh, and, and what I did discover is I don't have any the only port I have one port for the, that the printer and I don't think I even had to do that myself I think the uh, I think that I, well, I didn't look in hers. I think the uh, if I look on her printers, <clears throat> I think it did it when I installed the printer driver. I think it did it for me. Yeah, I can at least I can look at that without having to. Yeah, ninety one hundred port ninety one hundred is what the. Uh, and and the and the, and the uh, device you know IP address and port 9100. That's how it gets there. Socket, okay. It's using socket. Let's see what mine's using now. Printers. Actually, I think I can get there <coughs> like that pretty quick. <laughs> there we go. I remember the old the way I used to do it was different than the way I'm doing it now. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, socket ninety one hundred. Okay, now that's a clue that I hadn't thought about. Well of course it wouldn't be the same port, it would be the to do the, the scanner. But I don't, I, there's no, I, I'm, I was getting on here to just kind of try to finish up and forget the scanner, but I can't, I think I will, but I, I can't hardly make myself do it. But anyway, that's the same, that works, but I didn't set that up. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember the, uh, when I just said add a printer, in that dialogue there, I said add a printer and it, it automatically, and it popped up during the, the install of the driver, the automatic, well, I mean, you ran through a wizard, <clears throat> installed the driver, printer driver, it uh, said, do you want to open up the firewall uh, for that port? And that's what I was getting to, the firewall. The firewall's uh, on the machine, and then my, uh, and forward, I thought maybe I have to forward port some of my routers and stuff, but uh, none of that. I did some fiddling around and found out the port that the scanner's supposed to use for X, Xane or Zane or, and it didn't matter. I'm gonna put uh, put no on there. Let's see, I looked into cups, uh, and it's just a print server. It's got nothing to do with the scanner. I could set up all kinds of stuff. I used to do stuff like that with cups. Uh, that's a print server that generally gets installed when you install. Um, Let's see. Well, I, I'm, yeah, I don't remember installing it on purpose. It comes along with something else so that you can share your printers and stuff on your network or on the Internet. Um, let's see. Yeah, I found one of my docs. I have some screenshots and docs of, of the ports and stuff, but I didn't even look for the, through the screenshots. 
Uh, but I did find the dock with the uh, port, the same port, the Xane port, this, and it was, uh, I didn't write it down, I wish I would have. I've got it, I, I put it into my, I, I forwarded it, I forwarded uh, the route, I put a forward in my router to that port, it didn't make any difference. Uh, probably ought to just take it out, it could be, actually it probably really should because I think maybe that's forwarded. I don't remember any option saying, you know, inter internet or uh, WAN, so it may be doing it all. Uh, yeah, install the printer drivers. I've installed a bunch of, uh, I'm going to write down, can't see scan, uh, scanner. Okay. Can't see the scanner. I scan firmware didn't work. I went ahead and uninstalled it because it's not on my uh, computer and mine scans like a like a boss. That's the silliest saying ever. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. It's funny that some of the sayings that are popular these days were considered really dorky in the 60s and 70s when I was young. I was growing up. I was a kid in the 60s. And uh, now they're cool. Uber cool. There's another one. Okay. Um, let's see. AS Rock, Fedora 26. Thunderbird. I got her profile in there. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to have to look through my list now because you know, bookmarks, I got that done. I did. I went ahead and did sync. I s assigned her up for a Firefox sync account. You have to check the file associations. That's what I'm going to do now. I don't know. I mean, it's so late now. I may not get it in there tonight, but maybe I can get it to where it's almost ready. Yeah, I want to I wanna kind of the main file associations... Uh, so that she can just click on them in Crusader and they'll open up with the right app, the best app. <clears throat> some of my writing on some of my notes is hard to read. Oh, lucky backup. Okay. I already did that. Yeah, I did a, a backup through over the network, and I got most of it backed up, and then it died. It lost the connection. That's what I was reading. It took me a while to figure out what I was reading there. Okay, I did mem test on it. The memory tested good on this machine. I'd kind of wondered about that because uh, I'd forgotten. So I had done a mem test, and uh, it did do good. And... Of course, I made a video there, a couple hour video of me putting another power supply in it uh, that I thought was, well, it's not completely bad, but uh, it's really strange. It ran just fine with the lid off of it and it not mounted in the case. As soon as I put the lid on it and mounted it in the case, then it uh, it wouldn't start the machine anymore. So I, I think either there's something, a component, probably something went bad, maybe. Uh, of course, it could be just... I don't. I mean, I didn't. Don't didn't. I didn't really was looking for it, but I don't think the circuit board is like warped to where some, uh, you know, one of the, uh, like if one of the components had a long tail on it, it was touching the. Well, it still wouldn't start if it, unless it wasn't really getting a ground, but it was laying in to, on top of the case, metal to metal, and it should have been getting a ground. Uh, but anyway, it almost made me. It made me think the way it was doing. It would try to start and shut down like it was, and then you'd have to turn the power off and turn it back on like it was a protection circuit turning it off. <clears throat> so it, I thought, well, something is shorted, you know, to ground, and uh, so I could take the circuit board. I think I've done it before, but well, I don't know what I did. Then one day when I have time, I'm gonna mess around with the thing. And there is one cat capacitor that's swollen, but you know they can be swollen for years and years and still work. And I do have a, comp I've never really used it, but I have a capacit capacitance tester in my multimeter, and I want to try it out. So I'll test on that thing. And I mean, I could replace one or two capacitors. I hope even the, even the 10 or 15 that are in a, 
it's just so small and hard for me to see and hard for me to work my hands to handle small things like that. I don't think I could do them. I mean, they're not real expensive, but and it would be worth it if you could do it because the power supplies are freaking expensive. They used to put them on sale a lot, but they don't anymore because I guess because they're not as common. They're big, big, you know, 400, 600. This is a 450 watt. You see, you know, $55 is kind of the going rate for them. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> um, okay, now we're getting into really old notes. So yeah, back when when the Windows 7 OS was on there, and that's not on there anymore. So I think that's good enough. So I'm going to do her file associations, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, pretty, you know, about as quick and easy as as I know of. Uh, with Crusader, <coughs> so you just uh, open up Crusader. Oops, View. Wish there was a nice quick shortcut for that. I'd need to change that a lot. Um, go ahead and reload my preview again. <coughs> oh, and I've got the piece of paper here. Earlier, I decided I better test the printer again, and I was in my screen name, but I printed out a file while the printer was up and running. And, uh, well, it's... I left it on, but it went to sleep. Can't even connect to it from my machine now with the scanner. <coughs> I tried that, but uh, I think I did. Anyway, um, I think I didn't. I'll do it right quick. But I don't, I haven't fixed it. I, I know that for sure. I mean, I keep wishing, but I don't think, I don't know if I tried it with my machine. Let's see if it will talk to the scanner. It, you would think it would, yes, yeah, it won't. It should wake on the LAN what it should do by default if it's a, ne a wireless network scanner <coughs> and sorry <coughs> I guess my day's getting too long here <coughs> I took a I just not 20 minutes ago had a cough drip. I don't know that that's going to help. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, you think it's so aggravating to have to get I mean, what's the point in having a remote printer if you got to get up and run in there and wake it up every t five minutes? I think it'll stay uh, to where you can wake it up with the scanner app for about 20 minutes or so. <clears throat> if you've got one that's connect, you know, machine that'll connect to it. And uh, the printer, I think it's really short. It'll just say the printer's not there. Fax is like, I swear it's five minutes. But, because uh, I was trying, I was using it a lot a couple of months, months back uh, December. <coughs> but anyway, what was I going to do? Crusader. So we'll open up Crusader. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> we're in the backup directory. Let's go to, I still haven't changed that. I guess I'm not going to right now. Maybe if I can remember how to do it here in a few minutes, I might do it. So I'm going to go to the, that file. I remember trying to open that one up. That's one of my videos I made. Uh, I'm just going to associate it with. Tell you what. Oh, I don't like that Parole Media Player. Ugh, I ought to uninstall it. That came with the basic install. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, and it wouldn't uh, let me see I think I don't have it P-A-R-O-L-E uh, I guess I'll get another cough drop and see if it'll help because if I take a cold pill that'll take 10-15 minutes to really start doing anything and all it'll do is make me drain a lot for a while uh, I guess I do kind of need one though I'm draining like crazy that's why I'm coughing uh, hang on. Uh, let me go get one. I'll just do that so that it won't be just staring at that screen. Now I'll be right back.
starting to warm up in here. I think maybe that's part of it. When I start getting hot, I start doing that a lot. <clears throat> Let me get a drink. Okay, let me go back to the desktop. Go back to the desktop. Back over here on the actual machine that I want to work on. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah. Parole. P-A-R-O-L-E. <sighs> yeah, I think it's one I did not like at all, and I just uninstalled it. <sighs> Let's see about doing that. But what I'm going to do is, see, if I uninstall it, then VLC will be the only player, and it'll have to <sighs> be picking up everything. <clears throat> Actually, I might be able to. I'm going to hit apply on that. <clears throat> might be able to do. I just remembered, instead of doing one file type at a time, let's do that first. <clears throat> I think you can go in there and. I know you can in the Windows version. I'm not sure about the Linux version. <clears throat> Go in there and tell it, you know, uh, pick all media file types to play. I did not click VLC. V VLC. V yeah, VLC, not VNC, but VLC, Video Land. VLC, sorry, I, I've been in trouble. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't having all this trouble before I started making a video again. It's 42 degrees somewhere, but I don't think that's here. It's 55 here. I think I should already have that. I almost clicked that Facebook icon. Yeah, password's already saved, so all I gotta do is click log in. That should keep that for her how come it didn't uh, close it or anything maybe it will in a minute <clears throat> that's one of the things I want uh, things like that I need to get going because she doesn't know what to do when stuff like that comes up <clears throat> it's so tiny it's hard to find even if you're looking for it <coughs> <coughs> I'm not on the wireless mic and I can move <clears throat> but it says you're disconnected I guess I'm okay on the internet on that <clears throat> yeah I think so Oh, maybe the password's wrong or something. I'll worry about it later. That's <clears throat> not what I was going to do. <clears throat> I completely forgot I left my preview playing over there on the laptop. I didn't ever... I hit the reload and then I don't remember to... <clears throat> Go listen and turn it off. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah, I did. I looked for... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah other met players... I can put, you know, other so I can wonder if just for, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe K player or something. What's the other one? Uh, um, I 
That's pretty good. SM player. I guess it's not on there. Let's see. It's not on there. Some some of that stuff didn't get installed. I think I need to rework my install script. <clears throat> I think a lot of things got skipped that I didn't didn't realize. But what I'm gonna do I'm on the right machine. Oops. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna install SM player and uninstall parole. I'm gonna leave that open so that it for my I'll so I can <clears throat> I'll forget by the time I get get to where I can do it. So uh Open up. <clears throat> I said open up <clears throat> to the laptop. I said to him, I was in the back of my mind. I was trying to, I was opening, I had closed Firefox to let, give that, clear the cache in the Firefox and give the machine to rest for a second on the laptop that I'm previewing my stream with. <clears throat> <coughs> Terrible, sorry. I guess if it keeps up here, I'm not going to have to give up on making a video. Sometimes I just can't quit no matter what. There it is. I'm going to see if I can uninstall it because it, anyway, I, I won't be doing that trying to take my. We'll be trying to play everything. <clears throat> sort of think my internet is really slowing down because whenever you know that this is seems slow. And I haven't. I had the machine off for you know an hour or two. <clears throat> okay, that's the only thing gonna uninstall, so that'll be good. It won't break anything else. Do a speed test on my regular, my main machine. <clears throat> I, mean, I don't usually do that while I'm streaming, so I'm not telling what it might be. Yeah, I think um, could very well be. Well, that could have been, uh, that was, I don't think that was, a, I think that was a machine just getting a little too much to do. We'll see. <clears throat> no. I'm still getting a decent speed test even while I'm streaming. And <clears throat> downloading on that other machine at the same time. And the, de and the laptops. You know, it's some data coming back and forth. Now my upload speed's dropped off. Well, it would be because I'm streaming. I'm uploading. <clears throat> Normally it should be around five, four to five. Lately it's been five, around that four and a half five. But that's about what I would expect while streaming. So yeah, it's the machines are just kind of lagging. I guess not the connection. <clears throat>
Yeah, I noticed that. <clears throat> it's a big O instead of a little O. SM Player. It's a pretty good, uh, it's a lot lighter weight than VLC. Okay, I think that finished just as I looked up, or well, I guess it changed, uh, refreshed the screen when I clicked on. I think that's all we really need. That SM Tube's okay. okay. You can search YouTube and it'll. I think it will, yeah, it downloads them first, then you watch them. <clears throat> Dang, or can you just watch them? I can't remember now. <clears throat> I think you, I think you can just watch them, but it doesn't find everything. <coughs> 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 It, uh, I don't really know what the criteria is, but it doesn't find everything <clears throat> that you would find if, if you just did the same search right on YouTube. <clears throat> now, oh, it's, it's flipped over to my machine. <clears throat> We're going to close that. Yeah, I'm planning on just sitting there installing things like that. <laughs> I'll do that again, make it full screen so that I won't be uh, accidentally. <clears throat> it's almost finished. I don't kind of want to wait till this is done before I start doing opening more applications and stuff. <clears throat> <clears throat> RP Infusion Free. Okay, so I, I had kept thinking, I better check and see if I've got RP Infusion Repos. But yeah, I do. First, I can look in the setup t to see for sure. <clears throat> they don't put those repos, uh, RP Infusion, in Fedora come out of the factory. <clears throat> As we'd say, as they say sometimes, because uh, they're not strictly completely open source uh, apps in there, <clears throat> but they are all free. Uh, well, they're not all free. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> free as in freedom, not as in free pizza. <clears throat> Um, the free are free open source non-free and the RPM fusion district re repos are uh, not completely open source <clears throat> and so Fedora well and I guess the free ones I guess they're just not what Fedora wants to put in their repos I guess okay now <clears throat> I mean I already associated that with VLC so it should just open up in VLC when it decides to open up I don't have VLC set up there as a shortcut I always do on mine there's no sound uh, being heard <clears throat> yeah you're not going to hear any either because I guess the remote desktop doesn't uh, transfer the sound over. I'm trying to see, make sure. Yeah, uh, I don't have any. Of course, I'm not hearing any either because I don't have any sound. I don't have any speakers plugged into the machine. Plugins and extensions. There are some plugins and extensions for VLC. I'm going to say allow only one instance. And 
do that. Yeah. What's that about? Continue to play back and win. I don't know. I'll leave it like that because I don't really know. <clears throat> I like to use that normalized volume a lot. And 11 seems to work best for me. Oops. Well, let's go. I don't know if all my changes are going to get saved. If I don't save it every time, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, they did. Okay. So I can go through each one and do it. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't like it to go to full screen myself until I put it in full screen. Yeah, I'll leave it. Because even though it won't be full screen, it'll probably at least be this big. And Because uh, she might get stuck at full, in a full screen video mode and not know how to get out. I think that's probably good enough. I don't like subtitles. If they wouldn't do it, on, if they'd only do it on other languages, it'd be all right, but they always do it on English. Hmm. They are good when you're, well, I don't think she'd be watching anything that's not in English. <clears throat> okay, now. Oh, I didn't see the... I was really going in there to look for... Uh, these file associations. I may not be able to do that in the Linux version. If it's there, I didn't see it. I, may, I think it'll be okay now. I don't think... I did just install that other one, and since it was installed after VLC, it might have tried to take over. <clears throat> That's the thing. It's the last thing you installed usually takes over the file associations. I don't see anything for that. And there's a lot of cool extensions. There's not any activated. I don't remember. <clears throat> you want that? What is that? Well, maybe it's already in there. No, I don't know. It's not doing anything when I click on it. <clears throat> well, I usually don't f fiddle with that a lot. Uh, and you, you just usually you do just fine. Okay. Um, oh, wait. There's a couple of different file types right there. There's a WMV, MOV, help it up in SM Player. I guess it wouldn't hurt a thing. <clears throat> What's that? 
That opened up in a media app instead of a player. So uh, I really just, I do, <clears throat> would like to be able to, uh, yeah, this is a, what is this? Video decoder. This is not a, I thought it was a, oh, that's Avid Mux video editor. How funny. Yeah, that's just why I'm doing this, because that would really confuse the heck out of mom. It was an SM player, and it wasn't. You got two choices, in Q and SM player, or SM player. <clears throat> so we'll just say like that. That should open up in VLC now. I don't know if VLC, I think it'll play it. Maybe it's a, it'll play the newer ones. That's a really old one. Hmm. Oh, I did something wrong there. I know what I did. I clicked on those settings. <coughs> you know what to say, if it ain't fixed, don't broke it. Uh, and Q items to be the playlist that stops it that just puts it in the queue and she'd never find it and I would I'd be I was wondering what was wrong there we go <clears throat> but if you double click and it just plays then you're good okay yeah yeah there's one something that I made all uh, Oh, that opened it up in Paraga Music Player. This is an OGV is a video, not an AUG video, uh, audio file. But a lot of apps don't know the difference. This is the only surefire way I know to do this and have it do what you want. I wish Thunder uh, would come up. I wish it would come up, uh, you know, front and center when I click on a picture uh, you know I think it does it does do that or doesn't it do that maybe it does it even in uh, mate this is XSCE so it's not going to do <clears throat> exactly what I used to it's not doing exactly what I'm used to a lot and it's at least there's a lot of different types of videos in here <clears throat> so I can quickly I mean there should be a quicker way to do it but I wonder if you can turn on the audio. I don't know if I really want to, but audio to be kind of cool you would think you could you would be able to turn that on if you wanted to got a lot of stuff to talk with people and help them it's a really good app i think for doing that i mean it looks like it would be i don't think you could turn on the remote audio <clears throat> but it might use up too much bandwidth anyway It's probably a little less annoying that way anyway, right right at this moment. What is that? Oh, I think that's a Microsoft video editor file. It just doesn't know what to open it with. I think that's what it is. FLVs I've already tried. Don't think I've tried a WebM. There we go. That was already working. Let's see. Yeah, I already did. Uh, 
did do an FLV, didn't I? It's one of the first things I did. Yep. Already did OGV, didn't I? This is one of a video I made, a desktop video. These are a whole bunch of, I made them at, when I built the Fedora 13 system, even one, you know, before the 14, and I made all these how-to videos. <coughs> I just realized these are on newest <coughs> to oldest. So those are all AUGs, every one of them. Oh, well, no, there's a couple of MP4s in there. <sighs> it's this directory and it opens up in LibreOffice I, I knew better than to click on that I think I waited too long to click to another desktop I don't think it'll open up over there we'll see it's actually not even moving to the other desktop so I think the machine is a little, a little tired again so I better quit giving it oh there's a uninstalled that I thought uh oh I think maybe the machine's not my remote desktop may not be responding I think that's what it is Let's see that looks like the parole media player icon yep connection has been lost trying to reconnect don't know why let me see if my stream is still working Could be that my, I'm worried that my Wi-Fi is out, but I just got, didn't I? Well, no, I, I rebooted everything, the, the modem and everything. Actually, I rebooted the modem and the router be right after my previous video, <coughs> and uh, it is down. Shoot. My whole stream is down. So even though I got a good test, now I'm still recording to my hard drive so I can upload this later. That's why I didn't just say, okay, crap, and quit. That's that's aggravating. Okay. Um, I'm going to reboot my... Um, get over here on the camera so I'll just show what I'm doing I'm gonna get up here and reboot my uh, router can't be on the wireless mic because it depends on Wi-Fi so that doesn't work either. <clears throat> okay, let me just get up there and reboot. Actually, I think it seems like the connection was trying to come back, but I'm going to reboot it. I thought I saw some telltale signs of, uh, oh, I just realized something. My cameras were my cam my cameras my cameras were fine until I did that. So let me go back to the desktop. Um, that's all I got left. My cameras were fine until I did that. Uh, I'll just stay here in OBS Studio until. So my actual internet connection must have either got too slow to do the job or went down altogether. It's funny. For uh, normally, I don't reboot my modem, but once every several months, you know, I don't even think about it because everything's fine. But lately, it's been giving a lot of trouble, and, I was, and then when I'd reboot it, it would fix it. I was having to reboot it once or two, one to three times a day for a while there. That's getting too much video feedback. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't want to do it just now. I thought, well, I'll reboot the mo router and see if that works, but wasn't dawning on me that oh hey my camera is working both cameras are working so my router was fine it wasn't what I was thinking is maybe my Wi-Fi has gotten overwhelmed 
And that's why my, <clears throat> but actually my remote desktop doesn't even go over Wi-Fi. It goes over wired. <coughs> and that usually doesn't give a problem. Hmm. That's right. That's not, my remote desktop wasn't working. So the router was in bad shape because now it can't connect. It's lost its whole, I'll probably end up, oh, well, I still haven't got my, my connection's not back up yet. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I lost my wired connection to that desktop. So the router was getting overwhelmed. So maybe my internet is okay. It did test good when I first noticed a little problem. <clears throat> but I don't know why my router would be in bad shape. It's just been a couple hours since I rebooted it. And I always reboot it after every stream because if I don't, the Wi-Fi will get quit working. Basically, just quit working. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here. Um, yeah, I'm still recording away, so this video will, I just have to upload it later, <clears throat> but yeah, my laptop's not, uh, never did connect, well, yeah, so, I don't really know, I mean, even though I don't have internet, I should still have network, uh, if my internet was down, let me look and see if it's mm -hmm. down, <clears throat> let me look at my modem. Oh yeah, my router's back up, but and it looks good. The light looks good. Internet looks good. Okay, it looks like the uh, when the firewall applet comes on. Now I think we're back up with the router. I think the white light was on. That D-Link just has this one big old white light across the front. What's well, yellow when it's not when it's rebooting and it's white when it's good. <clears throat> so uh let's see. Yeah. Oh no. We have a we have a uh one a one twenty two dot one IP address. Weird. Bridge. Virtual. Hmm. And I'm not on wireless. So. I guess I'll re I just got through rebooting the router. It did no good. So I'll do the modem first and then the router. Even though the modem looks like its lights are on and somebody should be home. Yeah. Look, everything looks good. Thing. It takes a while to get rebooted. <clears throat> and I did discover that you don't really have to reboot the router right after the modem on this D Link. The other ones you usually had to. Uh, so a lot of, uh, they might get their IP address, but they didn't. See, I can't remember. Well, they got their IP address okay, but they the, the machines they would be stuck in like a. Even though the machine thinks it has an IP, the right IP address, it didn't work right. Let's see. Can't seem to f f click the right thing. One nine two to one six eight dot one twenty two dot one. No good. <clears throat> and uh, team viewer says not ready probably have to close the app and open it back up but I thought I'd wait and see what happens and uh, it's not doing anything though I'll, ha I'll have to get up and look it's not gonna oh it's just just really slow Modem shows to be good. Back up. Looks 
So I'm rebooting the router again. <clears throat> I'm watching the modem while it does it. <coughs> See what the lights look like. The bottom light on the mo bottom blue light on the modem blinks. Looks like it blinks when there's a while it's you know when there's a connection while there's a connection. For the, it went away for a second. Looks like it's gonna be the one that blinks. The one that there's a green one shaped like the world. That's probably the internet one. <coughs> There's two blue ones and a green one on top, which is power. Those two blue ones kind of look like a USB signal, and this does have two USB. Um, and now my, my firewall is coming back up. Now I have white light on the router. Yeah, and the blue light's just kind of blinking slowly like it usually does. And the white light's back up. But I don't have. Still don't quite have my connection yet. I don't know what could be wrong other than the, something wrong with the internet connection, but it looks like everything's good. Usually it'll, uh, a bunch of lights be out and it'll just be like one of them keeps blinking, you know, kind of slowly when it's down, when the internet's down. <clears throat> I can't remember exact. Well, I guess the firewall was going off and now it's coming back up, yeah. I wasn't where I could read it. I could just see the icons. <sighs> so, uh, I was thinking I would, yeah, I don't want to, I'm still recording. It's still, uh, the button says stop streaming, stop recording. See, I can stop and start the streaming and recording on a local separately. That's why I set it up on purpose just for this kind of a day when something like this happens. But they both, uh, the streaming, I guess, is just trying to stream. Uh, there's something wrong. Uh, it's just not acting normal. I'm going to have to say, I mean, this is not something I have happened, so I don't really know what's going on. Um, <clears throat> boy, this is an unexpected aggravation. Not one thing, it's another. If it's not another thing, it's something else. Okay, now it's firewalls activating again, and it looks like we may have our connection. It's not trying to connect up there. Now it says zone public deactivated for you know e n o one, but it looks like we well, let's see what our connection is. It's still that weird one twenty two dot one. I wonder if. Uh, <clears throat> Go ahead and close this because it's not gonna, you know, all that fiddling around with forwarding and stuff I did might not have hurt anything until I rebooted on the router. I re forwarded, but what I forwarded shouldn't have hurt anything, but I won't know. And no, wait, I rebooted the router right after I did all that and I was on the internet for an hour, hour and a half. I don't think I can go to the router. I always get a little bit of this page it's in the, out of the cache. I was going to say, I can't connect to the router. I am not connected to the router. I think that, I was, what I was thinking is that is like, A local IP address. Let's see, 122. Dot, I can't look it up. 122.1. I think that's what the machine is. Uh, what would be giving that out? I don't have a DHCP. Uh, yeah, DHCP. Uh, wrong. I don't have an IP address server on my local machine that I knew of. It does say. V Virtual V I R B R O. That's virtual interface. So that must be what that is. The virtual IPv4 address. 
It must there must be a virtual IP address server. I don't even know why that's on there. It's, I think there's some. I mean, I've seen that ever since like I don't remember when this Fedora 23 for sure uh, started seeing that just by default, you know. So okay, I don't know what in the world could do that. And I don't, my laptop, well, it's just sitting there like it was. I'm going to see if it's got an IP address now. It's got a 10.102, and that's all it's got, wired connection. So that means it could work. Let's see. I'll reload my page there. My. It may be that even though the lights look okay, I still have no Internet. But what's crazy is I should be having my 192.168.0. You know, so and so on my router like normal, on my D-Link router like normal. It doesn't look like I have internet, but that's because something has gone wrong. Maybe those those for, port forwards. I don't see how forwarding that uh, one port could cause. You know everything to go wrong i'm wondering if my i'm having that weird sex you know scary little feeling like oh no is there something wrong with my uh router did it go bad you know but i mean it seems like it wouldn't be showing the lights are on normal and and just uh suddenly you know <clears throat> the lights look normal but it's not giving out. It's not the D yeah DHCP yeah DHCP server's not working. All of a sudden, uh, OBS Studio disconnected recording. Huh. Let's see. I think I can hit. I mean, I didn't hit stop streaming. Uh, I started to hit it, and then I thought, well, no, let's don't do that. Maybe it finally gave up on the stream uh, because I didn't. I know it won't stop the recording, but I just didn't. I just wanted to be safe rather than sorry. But uh, I don't understand why I'm getting this. Okay, it's doing. It's trying to. It's trying to connect again. Public activated on interface. Okay. So and so. Let's go to another window so that it won't be getting video feedback. The firewall. Even though I did what I the things I did in the firewall, I can't think of a single thing that could cause something weird like that either. Well, the thing is, is I did all that stuff, rebooted the modem and the routers, banging into my microphone, and then everything was fine. Uh, well, except for I did notice that uh, I got an email, I get email notices when my web server is not reachable to the internet, <coughs> and it said it had been down for like 45 minutes. And that was when I first sat back down. I don't, but I didn't think I'd been running around for 45 minutes, uh, you know. But that's when I first sat back down and started looking up some other stuff. Uh, and I was looking up stuff for quite a while. Uh, everything was fine, no problems. This is not... Uh, I mean, I can just reboot the machine, and but... but the router is the thing that seems to be acting up, not the machine. Let's see what does that say. Deactivated, deactivated, activated. Okay. Wait for it and see what happens. But the modem, you know, if my internet's down, that doesn't mean my router is going to give the wrong IP address. That's what's throwing me for a real big loop. I'm getting. I'm hungry. I was hungry before I sat down here, but 
uh, people were in the kitchen, so I thought, well, I'm going to have to wait anyway, so I'm just going to do this. And now I smell somebody cooking, and it smells good. So now I'm really hungry. It doesn't smell that good. Whatever they're cooking is not not something that I would like that well. Uh, they're not cooking for me anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, cooking for them. But um, I'll just be eating my normal chicken dinner, <coughs> my frozen chicken patties and uh, toast and stuff. But uh, this is weird. This is really weird. So you can't check the connection anymore until it quits trying to connect. I've rebooted that thing. I, I rebooted the modem. I rebooted the router twice or three times now. Let me look at the router and see what the lights are doing. I can't see them unless I get up. It just keeps doing that. It keeps trying to reconnect. Now it's showing a connection again. Same one nine two dot one six eight. Oh, I think I will do a screenshot of that. That is weird. I kept wanting to copy that and uh, search for it. See what I, so I can remind myself of what type of IP address that is. I think it's an inter uh, internal type, but. Well, I was set, I, I, by looking at it, I, I think my machine's putting out that to itself. <laughs> Let me get up there and look at the, try to reboot it again or something. I was looking, trying to kind of watch the modem. Uh, yeah, that blue light, the bottom blue light just goes off while it's rebooting. I guess, <clears throat> I just can't imagine what caused it. But I know, I know what the uh, best thing I can think of to do is to uh, reset the modem, you know, reset the whole thing. I mean, the router, can't get my words right. And... Uh, I think I may have a back, I already made a backup file of its configuration, of my configuration that I'm using right now. What if I didn't, I'd be up the creek. I got a lot of settings in there, you know, for my, I do have, uh, well, I have my, main thing is my reserved IP addresses, like all my phones are reserved for the same IP address so that when I turn everything on, it just works, you know. But, uh, I just can't see why it would just suddenly do that, especially I would have suspected my little port forwarding things to have somehow fouled things up like I don't well it shouldn't have ever done anything to the DHCP server though. So some kind of bug in the software or the hardware is actually acting up which would really be bad. I mean I do have my TP link I could go back to but boy it'd be a pain in the butt changing all my stuff to get it to work again I mean I'd uh, this thing is new enough I, I you know I could I guess I'd have to send it back or something it's not new enough I could just send it back to Amazon where that's where I got it and I'd have to send it on the warranty you know <clears throat> I was been real happy with it I sure hope there's not something wrong with it but um uh, Boy, it's just doing same thing over and over. So it doesn't look like it's going to uh, okay, public activated. I guess I could do that. I go, <clears throat> maybe this craziness has got to do with something I did on the firewall. I'll just disable the firewall for a minute and see. 
You could be doing that. Okay, because uh, I did do some port change forwarding stuff in there. I've never had this happen before that I can remember. Um, got to remember. I didn't add any ports in here. Those are all just like they were. Okay, I did all that on the uh, other machine. Now, I suppose if... Uh, nah. I don't think it could. The uh, I guess I'll do that. I'll start turn, I'll turn off the AS Rock and stuff. I mean, if it was serving up a DHCP server that was taking over and fighting with my router... But uh, I didn't turn on it. I didn't install any server. I, I didn't set up or install any servers that I remember. <laughs> well, I was, unless I opened up a port a while ago that uh, there was already a server running. Oh, what? Uh, uh, Sane. I was trying to get Sane to work. Hmm. That kind of makes... Maybe those Sane ports I opened up, actually, there was, there was already a Sane... It op it let uh, it was already a sane. I didn't know there was a sane server though. Well, let me just turn that. Uh, first, I was gonna try. <clears throat> I was gonna try uh, turning off. The, how do you turn off the firewall? You got locked down in panic mode. How do you turn it off? Lock. Yeah, I don't know. Let's look see what our IP is. It's still one twenty two. Okay, so I don't see anything wrong in my firewall, so I'm gonna go shut down the uh Streaming is long dead. So I'm going to hit stop streaming. That shouldn't hurt anything on this recording. Okay. And uh, stay on the desktop because the cameras don't work now. Anyway. And I'll leave that like that <clears throat> until I get done. What I'm going to... Let me switch... Okay. Oh, the AS Rock has uh, locked itself up. No video. I can't show it, of course, because I don't have any. Well, of course, I couldn't show the remote desktop, but that must be what killed the. Uh, this thing does this sometimes. I don't know. If, I think it could be the power supply. I'm going to turn it off. I unplugged it. Let me get my network cable tape on it to protect the clip. So I went ahead and unplugged it. Everything from it, because I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Not. I am tired, and the instant I can get in and get me something to eat, I'm going to get something to eat. No matter whether this stuff's fixed or not. <coughs> okay, so that must have been what happened initially now did that uh, that couldn't have done any <coughs> okay now here's an idea 
that's in a spike. When that thing went wacky, maybe the power supply is messed up. And it sent a spike back down the Ethernet cable to my router. And now it's this connection established. Um, so it wasn't serving nothing up. Well, let's see. Uh, it's, it, this window may not change until I close it and open it again. This connection window. It did. That was it. Okay, now how in the world can uh, a, a machine crashing suddenly i mean well it was still running it just had no video so how could it be sending out like a competing dhcp you know ip address that this it's like it it sent a server uh, an ip a dhcp signal down back backwards down my router and it was getting to this machine i mean i've i've done messed around with uh uh, what's it called? DR, DRBL, Distance Remote Bootable. And when you turn on a machine with Distance Remote Bootable, I guess I say, how can it? Well, it can, okay, this is how it can happen. Distance, Discless Remote Bootable Distro, Linux Distro, will send out an IP address and boot parameters and everything for any machine that connects to it to boot to that distro. Uh, as long, through the, I call it Pixie Boot, PXE. Uh, any machine that can do pixie boot uh, and that will do just what I was seeing there it'll do that kind of thing matter of fact it even uses an address like that but uh, I don't have DRBL on that machine but somehow when it crashed it was sending out it was running it was sending out DHCP IP addresses and it was overtaking my uh, router I mean it went back to normal as soon as I shut down the machine there's the VRBO there's that address okay I'm making up stories aren't I just to make myself feel better I think what I was writing this I think that's just a virtual uh, IP address it comes from the virtual some sort of uh, virtual networking I think and it's making up making its own it's its own little server okay so yeah it's not a 10 dot you notice if you're familiar with some different types of address it's not a 10 dot but maybe this is similar to a 10 dot uh but so this is the virtual uh though virtual bro so maybe that's why I call it. that's what calls it isn't my machine didn't do that i'm crazy i'm a, I'm a crazy old man making up stuff as a go well not on purpose it's just what happens when you get Confused, old and confused. <clears throat> you, you, there's so many things. Like I used to love to say when I was like tw 30 years old, oh, I forgot more than you'll ever know. I used to bug this kid I worked with. He was 18. He thought he was real smart, you know. Oh, I forgot more than you'll ever know. And I know I was really too young to be saying that because uh, old, old guys used to say that to me. But uh, now I'm old enough to say that, but heck, I can't even remember to say that. So let's see if my laptop it's still running and everything i'll see if it got an ip address yet i didn't actually check it oh yeah it's got a 10.102 it may not be able to get through to the i'm gonna close the browser and open it back up and see if that makes any difference but with all this junk i've been doing that 10 dot is on that uh, trend net which is connected to the tp link which is um connected to the d-link which the, that's the one that i was going what the heck's going on here so um uh, i tried to close firefox and open it back up and then tried to open it back up before it was finished closing so i got an error message so i'm back up and i'm not broken on crap now it's taking all day to shut down <clears throat> but my ip address is 10 dot See, I could have two. I could have a Wi Fi. I could ha I'd have a dot a zero one nine two dot one six zero dot whatever, and Firefox is still not shut down yet. It just happened. I tried to click on Firefox and it. Uh, oh, I hit the tab. I got Firefox, but I also got the tab up above it. Okay, finally, it's asking me what do I want to do. I was fixing to kill it. Okay. So, um, 
I mean, it may not connect through that router. It may, I may have to get the Wi-Fi back up and working again by like rebooting the machine. No, it's working. I just Firefox was kind of high up from not having, you know, the connection being messed up. Let's see. Yeah, I still only have the wired connection. No. Yeah. Okay, not 102, but it's working fine. Okay, so everything is still working as it normally does. And you know, I'm just going to set that machine down. I don't need it now that I'm not, I'm not going to try to stream anymore tonight. I'm tired and starving. So, uh, whoa, let's see if my cameras came back up. Yep, there we go. So they, they recover, or that one did. Let's see if the other one did. Yep recovered so my wife my wife is everything's back up to normal and uh <clears throat> i could have been showing you what i was doing ever, ever since i got my router back at working i could have been showing you and i didn't know it um everything's back to normal now um uh, let's see so that machine what did i decide it must have done well somehow it jacked up my router, obviously, and I didn't even have, once I shut down the machine, it was sending something, when it locked up like that, it was sending something back down the Ethernet cable, some kind of uh, signal spy, I, you know, a minute ago I was saying, oh, it's it's it's, a, it's got a DHCP server and it's serving up conflicting addresses, but as I just showed, it, uh, oh, yeah, I had to go back on the, but yeah, uh, as I showed the VBRO, it, the 122.1, that's still there. It, there's two of them in there now. Well, I'll go show it. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, wouldn't it be nice to have that set up? Uh, that's like some page. Uh, that's Mint Linux on that screen up there. Somebody was, I, I thought it was so neat. I'd never seen anything like that, but that giant mixing setup. That's a heck of a console. Sure beats my little uh, eight-channel jobber here, six-channel really, with two like two RCA in, ins and outs. <laughs> uh, that's not a Behringer uh, 802, that's for sure. I don't know what that is, but that's a. It might be like it's something like a Midas or something like that. I've never even laid hands on a Midas, but I've seen them, you know, in magazines and stuff. Anyway. Um, The um, losing my brain here. Okay, so this is my normal IP address, and then this is that virtual IP address that I was looking at. Going, what the heck? Um, that's still there. I don't really know what the heck it's there for. And like I said, it's just started happening automatically. I didn't set that up. Uh, that might be something to do with network bridging. That might be why it's there. Virtual bridge, B I R B R O, virtual bridge. You know, that might be what that is. And it can be useful because uh, bridging, the only thing I really know about network bridging is uh, like if you have, to, you know, more than one network interface, you know, card uh, or onboard. <laughs> uh, servers have, you know, several onboards <clears throat> a lot sometimes or cards. You can. Uh, Use that bridge to go, you know, like get your internet from one into one and then share it out to other machines, make it, you know, like a router. Um, I tried to set that. I, you know, there's a thing you call a, a network appliance. You can, you can buy them or you can set up. Uh, there's operating system, you know, Linux OS is for setting up any machine that, can, that has enough hardware, the right hardware, to turn it into a network appliance. And But if you put, you know, like say, at least three. You can put two, but three. I did it once. I put three network cards in one one of my machines in my server, the one I'm running right now, and tried to set it up as the fire. It let it be the firewall and the router to the whole rest of everything else because it's on all the time anyway. And I thought it. And they're they get up. See, your routers don't get updated. Uh, you know, you get a few updates in the first year or two, and then they don't ever get updated again unless you put DDWRT on them or something. And that's kind of tricky you know you can i did it 
I actually only ever did. I've been wanting to do it for years, but I finally did it to my old Linksys router. <clears throat> and it's out. I put it in the garage the other day, and it's repeating my Wi-Fi signal. I thought maybe. It's not on. It's only doing it when I turn it on. But I thought, oh, is that thing on? Somebody turn that switch on? Because I get to just turn on a power strip out there. I thought maybe somebody turn on the power switch, and it's not working right. Because sometimes well, uh, that other zone that I had out there, sometimes it would glitch up and... Uh, start uh, serving out IP addresses uh, over the Wi-Fi, and then it would compl- conflict with this router in here. Try to. <clears throat> so, uh, but that wasn't it. Besides, I'm not on Wi-Fi. That's why I was wondering about, thinking about Wi-Fi when it first started having trouble. But, uh, going in circles on it. Um, weird. So, you know, I think there really is something wrong with that, just like I've been fearing. I think there's something wrong with that power supply. Uh, and I'm I'm getting more and more scared to... Uh, I thought I was ready. To, I was going to quit messing with that scanning business, and I thought I was ready to just set that machine in there for her to use. I mean, you know, a while ago, I was sitting there going through the... I was going to do the last steps, things... Doing her file associations and so the best programs for her to use and or the ones I like basically. Doing all that and then all that happened. Uh, what happened was a machine. Uh, I mean, what it looks like is as if the video card uh, crashed or got full, you know, of memory or the memory got full. Well, it's it's even weirder than that. It's not, you know, like normally if you're working on a machine and the video chip gets full or the card gets full you know and it can't handle it anymore it's, its memory gets full then things will get wacky and you'll get that play uh, like you know those card games where you can see a whole bunch of cards in a row it'll get that effect on everything every time you move the mouse and it'll do stuff like that well it doesn't do that it just goes to like looks like a background kind of actually kind of like this color here that color of blue some little but not clouds but little streaks a whole bunch of streaks, like these little bars. Say so it's about that color, and that I mean it's just a coincidence that this picture happens to have what I'm talking about. But little streaks that are just about that long, uh, everywhere, the whole thing. And maybe there's, I don't, there might be another color in there too, or maybe black. <clears throat> but uh, that's all it does. It's always pretty much the same, and. It's. I it seems like it. I thought it was doing it when it was working too hard, or you, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I had just booted it up and was running. You know, I hadn't been running it that long. So uh, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> and I'm worried that uh, that motherboard that we bought brand new is get blown up by that that thing. So, dad gum. That means. Well, there is one thing I might be able to do. I could try it. Linux, you can plug a hard drive into another machine, and if it's close enough in hardware, it'll run. And it'll run fine if it's real similar. Like if you use an Intel dual core and you put it in another Intel core, you, it won't squawk. It'll run. So the only other machine I have that's a dual core that could really run for door 26, as well, you know, like this one does at all. I have another old laptop with a broken display and everything, but it has a VGA output. And I, I bought some memory for it. I found some, you know, some brand new memory real cheap. I bought a, over the years, little by little, I bought little things for it because I thought I might put it, get it going again. It was given to me, so it didn't matter that I spent a little bit on it, you know. But I just bought a power, you know, a power brick, <laughs> power supply. I uh, bought um, some memory. I didn't want to spend the money to re- repair the, the the hinges broke and the, the screen. I broke the screen. The screen wasn't broke. I broke it. I tr- was taking it apart to inspect it, and my screwdriver slipped and and ruined the screen. <coughs> and uh, anyway, it will run fine. I've ran it for long, you know, a couple hours at a time. And I usually run it on a USB stick or something. And uh, I usually run it on a USB stick or something. It's way under the bed or I'd get it out and show it. It's an Acer. <coughs> but uh, it's about just, you know, age, same age and size as the uh, 
Dell laptop here. It's in worse shape than this, and this was pretty well beat up, but it runs real good. But it's kind of the basic same thing as that. It's an Intel, about 2 gigahertz. Um, but I just I just now thought, because I don't want to start over and build a, you know, a, another operating system as a temporary, but you know what? I do have a, I have a, oh, I have an uh, IDE and SATA hard drive adapter. Of course, it's a, the, the hard drive is an IDE hard drive that's in there. And it's regular size. So it won't fit in a laptop. But I could plug my adapter in there, but it still needs a power supply because its power supply died. And, uh, hmm. I do have one that I bought for a picture frame. I bought it's a two amp, I think. No, it puts out five volts. So yeah, it only puts out five volts. I was gonna say I could. It can wire it to anything you want. <coughs> uh, yeah, it's five volts at one or two amps, and that wouldn't do it. I need twelve volts. And what I do though, I still can use my adapter in here, and I've talked about my power supply amp. I can just pull. I got Molex connectors here. Well, down there, uh, no. You, how come you can, oh, I switched differently than I realized what I'd done. But anyway, down here, down there under my power strips, I'm surprised you can't see the light in that, but that's an old Dell computer case. And uh, I have two computer power supplies in there and two, uh, two audio, car audio amps. But I also have the extra, and you, I left some out on purpose, just the ones for, for the hard drives and stuff, the uh, Molex connectors. I can just pull one out and plug it into my um, my hard drive adapter. I'm plugging it into my hard drive to power the hard drive. Instead of using that d adapter that died, it was a little wall wart type, of, not a wall wart, but a brick, like a kind of a style like a laptop adapter. And uh, it'll power it, but you have to leave it right here. You can't take it off in the other room, so... Yeah, that could be done, but it won't work. But I don't hardly ever use it because when you plug a hard drive into that, it makes horrible noise in my speakers. You can hear the you can hear the engine running on the hard drives. You can hear the hard drive spinning. And if it and if it if you're writing to it and it spins fast, then it'll get the the, the noise will get louder and faster. It's really irritating. I thought it might be fun to make some sound effects with it, but I definitely can't stand to use it much. You know, for hours on end. So uh, anyway. Oh, the other thing I could do is I do have a 32 guy. Uh, <coughs> I really should quit jabbering here, I guess, because I'm so tired. I really don't know what I'm doing anymore. Suddenly I'm crashing. I guess because uh, right before I started it, right when I started this, I ate a little bitty Hershey's chunk. It was a little bitty about that big of candy, piece of a candy bar. Two bite, well, really one bite uh, to, so that I wouldn't be starving and since i saw i heard somebody in the kitchen so but now i think i can get in there but anyway i've got this uh it's a usb adapter with a micro sd card in it 32 gigabyte now i've got a whole live system on there but i can back that up and uh the system on here i think big is probably way bigger than 32 gigabyte i'd have to install something on here but I could use this as a drive. I have uh, regular size adapters too. You can put this in a regular size. I think that Acer has a SD card slot. If it don't, I can just put, uh, I don't know if I've ever used this on it, but I know I've used my regular USB sticks on it. It'll boot, you know, it'll, it'll boot to a USB. But I think it might write faster if it was plugged into the SD card slot. <laughs> read faster <clears throat> but uh that would be a big enough to you know for her to use but i would have to i might have to start and install again i mean it only takes like 30 minutes to install your system but then all this other stuff well the thing is i wouldn't be able to put all of her files on there i know she, i know her files are going to be more than, than what would be left on there that's i've been thinking about that ever since i started worrying about that as rock but i thought no that's not going to be very yeah, I can't use the hard. I can't. I don't think that hard drive. Um, I don't. 
Uh, well, unless I've got a power, power supply, I can't. Uh, I'm not. I've got a few like printer power supplies and stuff. So I know I have that were given to me. Uh, and some of those HP printer power supplies they put out, I think they like it's either 18 or 19 volts. So they have. To, uh, let's see, some of them have more than one, you know, physical wire coming out of them in different amounts of voltages and some of them have like a multi-pin that you could tap into uh, and put a molec in. I could just get I've got plenty of old broken power supplies I could just cut so a, a you know molec connector with some wire about so long off of it and uh, you know put a quick well crimp connector on it I've got some crimp connectors out in the garage put a crimp connector if I could got any that'll fit into that end of that I bet I've got I bet some of them would fit in there if not I could find something I used to use I used to solder a wire onto a nail to use it for a connector you know and stuff back in the 70s so I got a couple one or two of those um, of course you gotta be careful <laughs> about it you know, I I used to use them for testing and stuff, and they, they were I never even bothered to insulate them, you know, because I was careful back then and steady-handed. But there's, yeah, I could plug that. Uh, I could I could make me something to run if if one of them has 12 volts. Well, I know a lot of times they have like 18 and nine, or 18 and six, or five and ten, or something like that. That hard drives, I've, I've run them, all, um, I had some hard drives, uh, uh, power supplies I was using on them, computer power supplies, and they weren't working right, and they were only putting out like 11 volts or so, and that won't run a hard drive, a regular hard drive. It'll run, it might try to run, but it'll act up real, real erratic, and it's probably bad for it too. It'd be a big junk, a mess of crap for it to haul in there and say, okay, here's your pile of junk. Now, use this is your computer. Use this for a while. <laughs> Hard drive laid out, you know, broken lid. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to, I mean, literally, you know, you, you can't just open the lid because it, the hinges are broke. You know, you can't just do that. You have to be very careful. And But you've got to get in there to start it up. There's, I can't think of a place to set it in there. Uh, uh, the way her desk is, you know, really the only good place is underneath it, you know, down and I'll say like that. It's on her right, but <clears throat> that's where her computer is. And there's no room on top because her printer's up there on top. Her mount, mount monitor and printer takes up her whole desk. Actually, the printer is half on her desk and half on her dresser. <laughs> so that's all that is why i didn't just go ahead and go and grab that laptop and use it i've tried other machines before i got into this i've got a pentium 4 and a celeron that's like 2.5 gigahertz and since then i've been given some some more machines that are out in the garage and i've got a 2.8 gigahertz celeron out there in the garage but they're single cores and a dual core will barely run fedora 26 so they wouldn't do it I could do something older. I could do Debane or something, but if I was going to do that, still would rather have a dual core. I can't believe this is all turning into such a round and round. I finally realized, though, this power supply is just as I worried from day one. I really shouldn't have been using it. It is in bad. It's not in good shape. Because I, I, now that I saw my notes, it says I did test the memory and it tested good. It wasn't under any load or anything. Of course, just mem test x86. So I don't think there's any problems with the memory. Uh, the processor is probably okay. I mean, how it'd be really hard to tell about that. I don't even know. Other than running a, you could run those programs, you know, stress tests and stuff. But obviously, you can just sit there and run normally. So I don't, stress tests would just crash it. That's all it would do. I don't imagine, unless the power supply has a damage, something, you know, components on the motherboard, I think it, 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 I mean, I bought it new a few years ago now, but, and it, has, it hasn't been run hardly at all. I didn't, every time, it was either, in, it was in the box for a year or two before I ever even used it because I, I uh, bought it for her, her machine back here. Where is it? In the floor back there. Uh, with the fan on it. I bought it for that one, and then it turned out the motherboard wasn't bad. And uh, so then it stayed in its box until this came along. And uh, I suppose I could just go ahead and buy a power supply. 
I guess I'll sleep on it. It's getting really aggravating, though. But see, what I was thinking, what I've been telling myself ever since I, right before I started, you know, really getting into this again, is I don't want to spend money on anything. If I was spending money on anything, I would take. It's got a 650 watt power power supply in there that I bought when, when that other one sort of quit working right, went bad really. Of course, the other day I've got the video of me seeing it run, but it don't work. You know, then it run once and then not run it the next time. Uh, ran them with the door with the lid off of it, and then wouldn't run when it was installed in the system. But and that motherboard, that AS Rock motherboard, I could get. Well, I was looking at them the other day. I could get a used six core processor for about 40, 40 45 bucks, I think. And uh, should be fine, you know, as long as it's for somebody that's, you know, got a good rating on the whatever site. You know, probably Amazon. That's where I saw them. <coughs> saw them other places too, but. And then uh, I could, well, I would want more than just two gig of memory for sure, but I could use those two, two uh, one gig sticks it would run that I have of DDR2. But uh, six cores, I think, on that board, will you can use DDR2 or DDR3, or maybe it's, yeah, I think you can use either or. Uh, eight cores, it has to be DDR3. But that's a cheaper memory than DDR3, and it's fast. You know, it's going to be plenty fine for her. But I, what I would want to do is get two four gigs, so to max it out at eight gig of memory. That's what I'd want to do. So I'd have to get forty bucks for the power supply, and then spend probably sixty to seventy five dollars for eight gig of memory. But then she'd have an upgraded machine, completely upgraded. But in the meantime, while I'm doing all that. Got to have something for her to use. I borrowed that tablet, that 10-inch tablet for Christmas, but she hasn't caught on. She has trouble remembering how to do Android. I mean, I don't care for Android either, so don't blame her there. <clears throat> and it's, I've spent hours, well, I spent, I think, two weeks on it, setting it up for her before Christmas. And, boy, I get tired of looking. Even that's the biggest biggest tablet you can get, or just about the biggest tablet you can get, screen-wise. But it's still too small for me. And, you know, it's small for her, too. She can actually see smaller things than I can with her glasses on. Uh, she sits there and reads papers. That, uh, she'll sit there and read, uh, you know, junk mail and newspaper and all that stuff. I can't see that stuff even with the magnifying glass. And when I get, to, you know, I use this all the time. When I grab this thing up and try to read print, it just kills me. It just makes my eyes go nuts because... Um, it was, you know, uh, it's not that big around for one thing, but uh, it just does. And uh, I've always had trouble reading. For some strange reason, I can read on a computer screen and see more accurately and and see it better than I ever could my whole life, ever since I was a kid, on paper. I've always had trouble with my eyes swapping letters and numbers. And even in like when you're reading in a, you know, a paragraph, like I'll get a word from here and one from here and one from over here and stick and they'll stick together and then I'll realize what I've done, you know. So uh, why am I talking about that? I have no idea. Okay, um well at least I figured out my gosh, what a strange thing. Uh I mean, you know, you I've seen modems hang and, uh, you know, hold your phone line or and jack things up like that, but I've never, if, if that's happened, I don't remember it. But, okay, so if you're, uh, if your machine, I mean, I don't know if it's the power supply for sure, but that's my guess. Uh, but if your machine craps out and hangs up like, uh, like that with the, you know, it's still sitting there running and you can hear the fans, but the video is like, it's not dead black. It's like I said, it's all those colors. Uh, and then your Ethernet goes nuts and your Wi Fi goes. Well, my Wi Fi was working at first, but my Ethernet, until I uh, rebooted, what did I do? Reboot? Yeah. Yeah, I was sitting here with, you know, showing myself on the camera and the Wi Fi was working. And, but when I rebooted, and I had a lot, of course, I, now I know why I lost my Team Viewer connection to the S-Rock, because it was it had quit, you know. It wasn't running any operating system anymore. Uh, it's not just that you use video. I mean, it is crashed. But a normal crash, you just get a black screen or something, you know, with Linux. You don't get a blue screen like Windows and all that. 
Um, I think there is a one crash screen for Linux. It'll come up once in a while, but uh, I've only if there. I think I saw it once. Normally, if it did crash, it just usually it just freezes and you know your mouse won't respond, and then you can just hard shut it down and reboot it, and it's fine. <coughs> but if your video crashes, usually it goes black, or maybe black with some white lines or something. But that one doesn't. But wow, strange problem. So, uh, first it didn't, uh, well, I kept thinking about turning all the other machines off. I thought, well, wait, let me see if I can straighten this out. I, at first I thought, oh, well, uh, maybe I can get my stream back up and going. Because <coughs> I wouldn't want to quit what I was doing, you know. But that is really weird. I mean, it just completely killed, it, di it didn't, I mean, Oh, I didn't open it. Let me make sure I can get on the internet. <laughs> it, uh, I mean, I have the IP address, but I never even tried to get on the internet again. Well, I did with, what did I do it with? Oh, I got on with the laptop, and that does daisy chain through this router, but let's look and see. Okay, well, I figured it was going to work. Okay, it's working. Now let's do a speed test, and then I'm going to go ahead and quit for, for real this time. Okay. Well, I thought everything looked normal on the modem. Yeah. Looks about normal. So, I don't think it damaged the router, but it sure sent a crazy... It did something. I mean, I was afraid it had uh, some kind of short. I mean, it might have been a short, but if it was a short, I would think it would have burned something up. But what kind of erroneous signal could it have been sending down my ethernet cable to just stop my router from working at all i guess you'd have to be a true electronics engineer where's david where's david jones is that his name david david jones david david jones david jones uh, e e v blog he is one of the best teachers and electronic engineer guys i've ever seen i like to watch his videos where he gets Sometimes I have to really have be clear headed though to understand the, you know, a lot of it I don't. I just I kinda get the idea but I don't understand everything. But but he teaches you how it works and why it works that way and everything. I haven't watched one of his videos in a while, but mostly because I was not feeling well and couldn't comp couldn't concentrate on it. Let me go ahead and put my I want to put my image in there before I forget. <clears throat> 60 is fast, you know. Normally, uh, lately I've been go around 60. Well, when it was not acting up, the best I was getting was 61. Uh, it would go from 58 to 60, or 55 to 61. But And see, this, this week it's really been staying around in 63. And that's pretty good on the <coughs> upload. <coughs> anyway. Yeah, I don't note to self for that one. Let's see. I always like to do a speed test anytime and send it to myself anytime I have uh, some sort of problem. Let's see. So what I'm going to do then is stop here and go see if I can get me something to eat. 
All right. Well, that was really quite interesting. Uh, well, come back and figure out what to we'll work on. All, figure all this all out tomorrow. And sleep on it. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what though. I think that this uh, this, this thing's not going to run for her. It's going to do that to her, and it's made you know she's in there working, and maybe I'm asleep. You know, a lot of times we sleep on different schedules, and it might jack up the whole network, you know, and then nobody else can get on the internet while I'm asleep. They might even come wake me up. And that wouldn't be good. I wouldn't like that one bit. All right. Dad, come. Keep running into one roadblock after another on this. This is really more than usual, you know. All right. <clears throat> Bye-bye.